Okay, so the shadow effect, we're going to be dropping a whole lot of extra nodes, which are going to be more like a learning procedure for the whole thing. So without further ado, we're going to begin this whole thing, get you a cup of tea. Tea helps you understand Houdini and uh, take a sip and let's start doing this thing. Oh yeah. Okay, so all I did was just drop a grid, ain't nothing special that I've done. So grid and uh, let's begin this whole thing by actually, well, as of right now, the grid is kind of really smooth and not raggedy. You want a shadow effect, so it's going to be have to be all kinds of shapes. So let's begin this whole thing by actually splitting this whole, this whole thing up to different shapes. And I'm going to increase the divisions are a little bit higher to get a more pieces and more shards so then we're gonna drop in a vops up under the manipulate um layer over there or you can drop on the miscellaneous uh vops up same thing it's all the same node drop it in and let's start doing this whole thing now you have the global variables over here which just bring all the data into uh the vop uh world over here and over here in the position, what we're going to do is actually break down the position into three attribute, uh, three flow values by dropping in a vector to float. So pretty much what you do now with this is split up the values into three values of X, Y, and Z. And you guys have to plug it back in, so I'm going to just go ahead and implement that while I'm at it. So I float to vector to bring the data back in. As of right now, Y is zero, so plugging that in doesn't make any difference. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the rest to the other side uh, over here. The grid should disappear, but that's no problem because it pr pretty much shrinks everything to zero because that's the value that you're giving uh, VOPs to put down for the X and Z values. So next, we can drop a random over here because we want to randomize the effect, randomize the point positions. But random really won't work. I know that because I've tried it, it won't work. So we're going to use another VOP called, uh, under the generic, it's called non-deterministic random. It creates random numbers, basically, in a non-deterministic way, I guess. And what you're going to do is get the random values, which are random, and add the rand random values to the x or in the z position so you can just add the values in directly so i'm gonna just plug in the add to the that maximize this and then i'm gonna just plug in the x to the first part over here and plug in the sum of the total of the both the x and the deterministic uh, random to the x then i'm gonna do the same thing for the z value over here then another add. So I'm going to add the Z to the non-deterministic and drop in the sum into the Z value over there. Now I can get out of the full screen and if I look at my mesh over here, it's really rugged and really rough. So what I need to do is actually reduce the effect being created by the non-deterministic. And for one, you're kind of making a redundancy out of this. So I'm going to delete one of the non-deterministics over here. And um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually use the same deterministic right here on the bottom. So pretty much it's creating different values. Well, it's not different values. Well, same values, but I'm plugging it in onto diff two different nodes. What am I going to need and do? You can actually do it like this, and this is what I meant by saying we're going to be dropping a whole lot of nodes. You can drop in a multiplier right in between here, and plug in a constant over here, and the constant pretty much will uh, multiply the number over there. Or you can actually drop in a workflow multiply constant, which is actually just one node. And actually, I dropped it on the wrong spot, so I can shake this off and just plug it in right here where I need it on the multiply constant. Now, I'm going to zoom out again. And now, on my constant over here, I want to multiply this by a lower number. So now if you look on the screen over here, I can actually move this to a lower value and get a different result. And now I got a multiply constant, which is a same thing that this one is doing by adding a multiply and the uh, input constant. Uh, so this one does the same thing also. So pretty much, as you can see now, we're getting the same effect. We're getting the effect like we would like. So it's all, you know, ruggedy. All the mesh is like jumbled up. 
and just to sum up what I just put out this these two particular nodes as of right now these two the multiply and the and the constant node over here I do the same thing exactly like this one only this is one node and this is two nodes so if you don't uh, don't want as much clutter you can delete these two and put a, a multiply constant in between that so but it all works the same way essentially to get the effect of the way that you would like over here now I kind of like the way it is but the edges are kind of rugged so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a group uh, node right before this I'm gonna group the points and that way so points and I'm gonna name the group uh, edges and it's not gonna be by number it's gonna be a by a bounding box it's just simple as that so I'm gonna just take the bounding box to the very edges and I might just use the group over here to work on that involved so I have a smooth uh, edges on the side over there and once your mesh is done you got a clean mesh nothing messed up next step will be dropping in uh, divide so I divide under the polygon section over here so I divide and pretty much what you want to do with the divide is not really divide the mesh but compute dual that creates little shards or little shapes that are actually kind of cool like we would like more like a mosaic you know one of those church building kind of things that you would get usually so hopefully I'm going too fast for you but we got a whole lot of notes to drop so let's please try catch up and uh, well now that we got that particular part set up I'm gonna go ahead drop something okay so what I just did as I said it's gonna be a whole lot of extra nodes which are not gonna be necessary so what I all, all I did was drop in an add sop with one single point at the very middle no settings changed nothing just clicked on the checkbox dropped a color put the color to black drop an attribute transfer nothing touched yet and the color over here nothing touched it's still white now what I, I'm gonna go to the attribute transfer over here and if I increase the reduce the uh, distance threshold and the uh, blend width you can play with this basically if you look and I'm gonna go ahead and press the D key on the keyboard and now uh, under the miscellaneous I'm gonna change the specular highlights to off I'm gonna, I don't kind of don't want to see all the reflection so now you can play with this you get the we're gonna be implementing the same style so this is one way you could actually do it but we're not gonna be using that particular kind of style so I'm gonna go ahead um, put this to the side over here so pretty much all these nodes are not gonna be uh, used but that I might just leave them there for style if, if you wanna kinda use that style so the way we're gonna be doing this is uh, using a VOP swap so I'm gonna go ahead drop in a VOP and uh, there's now another thing that I, I more like three ways you can do this so I'm gonna try to show the way number one way number one which would be the easiest and probably the best way will be come to the object level and drop in a utility a null all right name it as you would like I just name mine center point then all you can do now is just because we're lazy and don't feel like typing you can come on the translate for the null right click on it and say copy parameter now go back to the shot where the grid is and right before the vops up you can append an attribute create and essentially what you want to do with this is create a position data so you can have it as a position any kind of name that would you would you like would, that you would like which is really easy to remember then it's under point class flow it can be a flow value but it has to be at least the size has to be three or you can put it as a vector and that will it be automatically three values in it now I'm gonna just right click on this and say co paste copy relative references so pretty much it brings the value from the null which you just uh, put up right now which is called center point right here and now with that data coming in you can take it into VOPS so I'm gonna go ahead drop this in over here so you can drop you can bring in the data from the chop wall from the VOP wall from the <laughs> upper level in two ways now being that it's a vector you can just go ahead and say type in the name that you put up over there by on the attribute create mine was POS so I'm gonna just plug that in over here 
and now you can use that data to actually you know get the whole thing running now that's way number one depending on how you want to do this way number two would be well let's do it in VOPS if it makes it any easy okay if I drop in another import attribute and I say instead of color over here I just drop in the letter P capital P that's gonna be more like saying position but that would be kind of redundant because in VOPS you see that's what the global node does so pretty much it inputs all the data in from um, the swap level into VOPS and pretty much the point position comes in from this particular P port right here on the very top so it, it assumes it's pretty okay so this literally assumes that it's bringing in every single point position for every single point that's available on your particular mesh now you can actually control this much easily by not telling it it's every single point by giving it a point